Good afternoon, guys. It's Saturday, July 2nd. My name is Dave Coker, and this is Talking About Finance, where we just talk about finance. Um, I think you know the routine. Me and about 40 buddies, 45 buddies, got a Telegram channel, and we're all bankers, retired bankers. We just talk about finance pretty much 24-7. People are global. And I bring the best or the most interesting to you guys. So let's start to take a look at, look at the S&P 500 for the last week. So utilities, healthcare plans, and insurance all seem to do okay. If you look at the sector level stuff, you can look at the green. And you can see everything else was down and some sectors were down hard. The S&P is down about 2.2% of the week, now down about 19.7%. Year to date, it was the worst first half of the year ever, uh, well, I shouldn't say ever, since 1970. The VIX traded down slightly, closed the week at 26.70, really flat on the week considering it opened at 27.23. The 10-year note closed this week down at 2.89%. It's down 1.3% year to date, and we're still seeing treasury yields falling. And you know something, guys? I think the U.S. is already in a recession. I look at lots of real-time data, I, I got a really strong suspicion we're in a recession. We'll wait for the next GDP print coming out at the end of the month to formalize this, but you've heard me say it. The U.S. is already in recession. The data just has that feeling. Oil closed the week at 108.16, down about 5 tenths of 1% or 50 basis points. On the week, it's up 43.8 year to date. So it seems the market's adapting the view that U.S. growth is slowing. Defensive sectors seem to be doing really well and by, or doing well, and really by that I mean they're down less compared to others. We'll look at those in detail a little bit later. Guys, my routine stays the same. I buy Bitcoin every Friday morning. I bought it yesterday. I'll be buying it next week. I've been doing it for years. Still acquiring Ripple, still building a position up there. Whenever the mood strikes, I grab some Ripple. And I'll be buying stocks Monday. And that's after all the June dividends have been paid and posted to my account. I ain't changing guys, fully invested until I die, no debt. And with the exception of bullion and Bitcoin, absolutely everything I own pays me to own it. I just gotta find a way to monetize the cats my wife keeps and then I'll be a happy man. <laughs> Finally, right? Uh, guys, the night is young and it's never a better time than now to plan how you are going to achieve financial independence. I'll give you a hint. It's pretty damn easy if you follow the one true path. Invest. Don't try to trade. Don't listen to any self-appointed guru selling you a course. Buy dividend-paying stocks, invest in them, hold them forever. And take the cash flow from those stocks and buy more dividend-paying stocks. It's really that simple. Just don't try to trade. Let's talk about how we're going to build wealth. Let's talk about the basics, guys. And these charts have been around for a while. It's always important to trot them out. So we're looking at, at real returns on different assets cla asset classes, stocks, bonds, bills, gold, and the US dollar. Of course, the real loser is the US dollar. If you held money in 1802, you were actually down over that horizon running up until 2012. Yeah, stocks, however, the big winner, if you held a dollar's worth of stock in 1802, and if you held it until 2012, you had $704,000. Who on this planet buys $1 worth of stocks? <laughs> we, we tend to put money in regularly, right? That's what we do. So you invest money regularly in the market, build it up over time, and you'll do well. Bonds, bills, gold. Yeah, we won't talk so much about them, except gold, I'm keeping the faith. And we'll talk later about gold. There's some interesting stuff coming out from, from Goldman Sachs in terms of price returns. But let's look at what's going on with this market. We'll look at the parts. And this is right off some, uh, and I think you know, anytime you see Croker.me on a slide, it's stuff that I sell to my investment banking clients in a newsletter that I write and distribute. And typically, uh, there's about 2,500 words behind the slides I'm going to show you, the two slides I'm going to show you. Uh, but yeah, you don't need that. And uh, I, I wouldn't sell it to you anyways. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely not going to do that. Um, but in any case, we can see if we take a look at the sectors, the 11 sectors comprising the S&P 500, this is how we decompose it. Look at them year to date. The benchmark is green. The S&P 500 down some 20.6 year to date. Take a look at the consumer, the consumer discretionary. Those are things that people don't need, discretionary purchases. Down 32.8. Energy, 
up some 28.9% year to date. Of course, the whole six months is good, but we look at this stuff quarter by quarter. Check this out. Taking a look at the same sectors for quarter two, you can see consumer, con I can't say that, oh my God. <laughs> consumer discretionary down 25.7%. Consumer staples down 4.9%. That's what I was talking about with defensives. Consumers, utilities, healthcare, energy. And once again, the S&P 500 across the quarter two was down some six, uh, probably 16.4%. Other things we gotta look at, people wonder why stocks are falling. Well, overall, there's a very simple explanation, guys. Risk-free rates are rising. And what we're doing here is we're looking at one year. You can uh, take a look at the yields over the past year. Uh, they've been soaring. So keep in mind what happens with share prices. First of all, on one level, as interest rates rise, stocks become less attractive compared to the risk-free rate of return, what we're looking at here. Because this is offered by the US government. They ain't gonna default. Although, uh, actually we've defaulted twice. I won't go into that now, but we have defaulted twice, but you know, 1971 and after the Revolutionary War. We won't talk about that now. Yes, yes, yes. I'm a master of arcane financial knowledge, guys. There's no doubt about that. I just gotta find a game show so I can monetize this. But yeah, it's interesting looking at these yields. Yields are rising, risky stocks become less attractive as the risk-free asset rise, uh, pardon me, uh, interest rate rises. And the other reason is when we, disc well, pardon me, when we calculate share prices, we do something called the discounted cash flow analysis, DCF. Go on my, um, my uh, podcast, Finance Facts, I talk about it. And when we do a DCF, the denominator, the bottom of the division, the quotient, is the risk-free rate, and that's getting bigger. So as the numerator remains constant, the denominator gets bigger, the quotient gets smaller. And yes, share prices fall. Oh, here's something interesting. Now, everyone's all upset about inflation. And of course, I'm not happy about the prices either. Uh, but in any case, I tend to track data constantly. And I think we're starting to see the edge being taken off on inflation. Here I've got two different index indices. I've got the S&P GCSI Agriculture and S&P GCSI Livestock Indices. So we're looking at broad baskets here, right? And we see both ag, oh, I just noticed a spelling error. Oh my God, none of my clients said anything. <laughs> oh God, okay, I'm glad that they pay their invoices in advance because uh, that's embarrassing. But in any case, we see guys that it seems like the edge is being taken off on inflation. Still, we're looking back one year, 25% year on year increase in GC GKX. We're looking at agricultural products as nothing to be sneezed at, but look at where it was, it was 50%. And the same thing with protein, with livestock, right? Only up 7.55% year on year. Uh, previously, it was up almost 16%. So yeah, I tend to think we're starting to see the worst of inflation behind us. And it's just in time for Goldman to come in and they're raising their forecast, their target price to 2,500 an ounce. Now, I do another uh, show that I don't th you're probably not aware of. And there I've talked about my view for gold. I've been up front with you guys. I moved 71% of my retirement capital into gold and silver in March 2019. And I've always said, once it pushes north of 2000, I'm gonna start to lighten up a little bit. And some people I respect very much, I'm not including Goldman Sachs in that in that position, right? I People before Goldman came out with their, their thing, I'll look up David Hunter, good guy. Uh, David Hunter said it was going to top out at about 2,500. And yeah, looks like gold. Goldman Sachs is saying this. A bunch of other people are saying this. So yeah, you might want to get some exposure to gold if you don't have some. It's probably still a good time to buy. But still, we're really hoping that Bitcoin is going to do something, right? It's like poking a dog, a, a dead dog. Come on, do something. <laughs> yeah, and here's the big picture for Bitcoin. We're going to talk about this a little bit later, right? But we're in another crypto winter. That's my feeling and many people's feeling. Uh, remember back here in 2018 up to about 2020, the stuff just traded sideways. Just don't really lose the faith. Keep the faith, guys. And really, really... You got to think about it this way, right? You know, the old expression is, first they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. Yeah, yeah, we're getting a lot of static right now from the regulators. Um, take a look at my medium writing. I summarize the EU's new proposed regulations on cryptocurrency. And this was pretty funny. I don't know who put this up on the channel, but Fiat has a Twitter handle. 
And fiat, I, I don't hate fiat. I, I walk around with money in my pocket all the time, but uh, I ain't gonna hold fiat for like 30 years. There's no way. But we're always gonna have Bitcoin, guys. Here's the big picture. Step back. When you look at it from days, when you look at it from years, when you look at it from decades, it looks radically different. So don't get yourself all worked up because it dropped 30%, 40%, 80%. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do what I do. Do what my friends do. What, do what we all do. We buy and we don't even look at the price. I've mentioned this before, guys. I buy Bitcoin every Friday. I don't look at the price and say, stroke my chance, say, oh yeah, look like a good buy. Look, oh no, too expensive. I buy Bitcoin. And I just know whether the price is higher or lower. When the price is higher, I get less Bitcoin. When the price is lower, I get more Bitcoin. It's a beautiful way to view the world, really. You don't really care about the price. You're price indifferent. As I've said before here in my medium writing, and yeah, we buy it regardless of the fiat price. We don't sell because of the drop. If that makes me a psychopath, then I'm nuts. I guarantee it. And yes, there are a lot of us out there. So keep the faith, guys. Buy yourself some Bitcoin, whatever you can put in there, lock it up. You're not going to be trading it. You're going to be buying it and sitting on it. Just buy it and sit on it. Buy yourself one pound, five pound, 10 pound, whatever. Buy regularly. Once a week is good. Let's get into that swing of buying and holding and buying and holding. And I feel, I feel I'm going to be richly rewarded. I already am. I've been buying it for years. I don't care about this price drop down to 25. I'm still making an absurd amount of money. Remember, I was buying it with less than hundred bucks. The same amount of money. So get in there guys. And best of all, if you own dividend paying stocks, you use somebody else's money to buy your Bitcoin. <laughs> Isn't life grand? All right, guys, take care of the night's young. Me and my wife have been carousing. We were up in London. We had a friend, uh, Franco, if you're listening. Hey, how you doing? He's on a plane right now heading back to New York. We dropped him off at uh, Paddington Heathrow Express. We took him to a pub for a, uh, took him to a restaurant for a full English. We took him to a pub for a, a boiler maker, a pint and a, some, some uh, uh, whiskey. And then uh, we came home. I wrote a couple articles for Medium. And then we went into the pub because what else are you going to do, right? And now we're home, and uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do. i got to go down and talk to her. I'll figure it out. Take care, guys. going to be an awesome week. i got a good feeling about this one.